leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 10. Summerfest postponed the big gigs, new dates, and the new issues organizers are now working out. A scramble for masks. The companies teaming up to help overcome the shortage and how you may be able to help. We're just running out of resources at this point. Trapped out of the U.S. in a foreign country shutting down, the local group struggling to get back home. The coronavirus outbreak is forcing another major Milwaukee event to change plans. Summerfest is moving to September. Take a look. The new dates are spread out over three weekends, September 3rd through the 5th, 10th through 12th, and 17th through 19th. That's about 12 weeks later than originally planned. Organizers say all tickets that have already been purchased will be honored. In a statement, Summerfest says the new dates provide the best possible option to deliver the Summerfest experience our fans and sponsors have grown to love. We are doing everything possible to continue a tradition which spans five decades. The other big headline tonight, stay at home. A shut down of non-essential businesses in Milwaukee goes into effect at 12.01 Wednesday morning. A similar statewide order is scheduled to take effect, but it's not clear when. We want to give people some buffer time to implement what, what is happening, yeah. but the, 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 dates, it, the dates and time when it's effective, when it, uh, when it, uh, goes, when it goes away, will be uh, determined tomorrow and, and announced tomorrow. In Milwaukee, Mayor Tom Barrett urges that grocery stores will stay open even during the shutdown. He says don't rush to stores and stock up. You will still be able to go to grocery stores, banks, pharmacies, health care facilities, and any law enforcement facility. Even restaurants are expected to maintain their to-go service. When those businesses shut down statewide, there is the question of who will enforce the governor's order. When a reporter asked the governor today, his legal counsel gave this answer. This order, like all other public health orders, is enforced by local law enforcement and including county sheriffs. And, you know, we fully expect and hope that people will comply. There are now 418 cases of coronavirus across the state. 206 are in Milwaukee County alone. There are confirmed cases in 30 of Wisconsin's 72 counties. Five deaths are now tied to coronavirus. Three are in Milwaukee County. A scramble for hospital masks and supplies is now opening up some interesting options for people trying to help. 12 News' Caroline Reinwald is at State Fair Park where they're taking medical supply donations. The call to help is drawing some Milwaukee County residents out of their homes into State Fair Park. We have some extra masks that my husband had, so we're giving the extra ones in. Every day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., people can drop off medical items they don't need into a truck parked inside Gate 5 off 84th Street. County Medical Services is asking for donations like N95 masks, safety glasses, protective gowns, and disposable medical gloves. And that's not the only place they're getting help. Seamstresses at Eater Flag in Oak Creek, normally sewing American flags, are making medical masks for workers on the front lines. We put a lot of work into it this weekend to make the proto prototypes and all of that, um, and now it's just training the staff. We tried the prototypes ourselves. They're thick, not like the N95 masks, but officials with Monterey Mills that supplies the materials say the masks can be used as an important barrier. My guess is they'll use it as an entry-level position when they're dealing with new patients. Uh, the strong advantage we have with our product is it's machine washable and dryable and reusable. And Caroline joins us once again live from State Fair Park. Caroline, what about the people at home who are sewing masks? Can hospital use them? Yeah, we know that hundreds of those masks are being made by people watching right now. That is a case by case basis. Local hospitals and ERs don't seem to be taking those, but there are low risk, low exposure medical industries and medical workers who are accepting those masks. The CDC has issued guidelines on how you can make those masks at home yourself. Caroline Reinwald reporting live in West Dallas tonight. Right now, the state is setting up a buyback program to help get more medical supplies. They're looking for personal protective equipment, or PPEs, items such as N95 respirators, gloves, gowns, thermometers, and face shields. And what it does is it offers uh, to take in any PPE donations 
or we're willing to buy back PPE from businesses that have closed as a result of the, uh, of the outbreak and uh, no longer have use for the PPE so that we can buy it back or take those donations and reprioritize them and get them out to the first responders and medical folks that need them the most. The state's director of emergency management says a website should be up and running within the next couple days. State Representative David Bowen says he tested positive for coronavirus. Bowen says he came in contact with another elected official who tested positive last week. He says the symptoms were intense, but he's now starting to feel better. I think it's important for, uh, for people to take it even more seriously. We've seen three deaths in Milwaukee County. Um, uh, and those are black men that we've seen um, and uh, really want, especially uh, black men in our community, to be aware that if they are experiencing symptoms, they need to seek medical attention. Uh, they don't need to sweep it under rug or to suffer in silence. Representative Bowen plans to stay in quarantine for at least another week. The other big summer event getting a close look right now, the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. Contingency plans are underway. 12 News' Derek Rose joins us live from his home tonight. And Derek, Milwaukee's mayor is still optimistic about the convention. Yeah, Patrick, he's been part of the discussion, but he did not seem bothered when I talked to him about this topic today on a conference call. He's still confident we will have the convention, but exactly what kind of convention and what that would look like is the big question. With less than four months to go, the process of pulling off a standard DNC convention is anything but normal, given the cloud coronavirus has cast over the country and host city. Democratic officials confirmed at 12 News the party is exploring a range of contingency options to ensure we can deliver a successful convention without unnecessary risk to public health. According to the Wall Street Journal, convention organizers last week discussed shortening the four-day convention by a day or holding a mostly remote event. Mayor Tom Barrett told me on a conference call he's been part of those discussions. Where do you stand on that? How that happens, I think, is going to be dependent upon where we are in July. That, to me, is going to happen. And the question now is what, what changes will be necessary, if any, um, when we get to July. So I think it's, again, it's it's accurate to say that, that everybody is looking at contingencies because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Bob Mulholland, a DNC member from California, suggested delegates could be left choosing their nominee remotely and leaving an empty Pfizer forum in downtown Milwaukee. Still, he admitted to Politico, it is full speed ahead until a staffer yells iceberg. And Milwaukee's mayor is still holding on. But I remain hopeful and confident that we are going to have a strong convention here. So, Derek, does the decision to postpone other big events have any effect on the DNC's plans? It doesn't look like it, uh, Patrick. The party is framing these discussions, these contingency plans, as part of the normal planning process of a big event, especially conventions, saying every convention comes with contingency plans to respond to a variety of scenarios. Patrick. Derek Rose reporting live from his house tonight. Derek, thank you. Ascension, Wisconsin, set up drive through testing facilities starting today. It's important to note these are by appointment only. You have to be pre-screened by an Ascension provider or through Ascension Online Health. Freighter Hospital also began screening people in triage tents. They are not for walk-up testing. Instead, they're meant to keep possible coronavirus patients separate from other emergency department patients. The coronavirus outbreak left people trapped out of the U.S. Tonight, Wisconsin natives stuck in Peru are desperately trying to get back home. 12 News' Ben Wagner spoke with them. Ben joins us live tonight. Ben, this group can't find any flights out? They can't, Patrick. That's right. The Peruvian government shut its borders last week, leaving this group from southeastern Wisconsin and many other Americans trapped. Tonight, that group tells me that they are feeling well, they are staying positive, but they say they are growing weary being trapped in a foreign land. Very frustrating. For Mark Sprague, his wife Maggie, and their friends, this was supposed to be a dream vacation. We're supposed to be in Peru for three days and then fly to Brazil for Stephen and Vanessa's wedding, which is supposed to happen on Saturday. Clearly that didn't happen since 
because we're still here. Instead, they're stuck in hotel rooms after the Peruvian government closed its borders, canceled international flights, and issued a mandatory 15-day quarantine last week. Sprague and his friends weren't able to catch any of the last flights out. Wow. There's no cars, there's no planes, there's no buses, there's no trains, there's no, no taxis, there's nothing to do. The president said Sunday the State Department is trying to get all Americans stuck in Peru back home. We've removed some and the rest are uh, being removed with the cooperation of the Peruvian government. Sprague has been in contact with the U.S. Embassy, but so far is still in limbo, not knowing when they'll get to leave. Really just been, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. Fill up this form, fill up that form, call the airlines and work on scheduling a flight. Well, calling the airlines does no good because there are no commercial flights. We are spending extra money on the hotel we didn't plan for, the food we didn't plan for. Um, we're washing our laundry in the shower, basically, because there are no laundry services. So we're just running out of resources at this point. So, Ben, they're trying and they're waiting at the same time. Do they have any idea when they might get out of Peru? where there's a little bit of hope, Patrick. They have been told that there could be flights going out of Cusco, where they are in Peru tomorrow. They do not know yet if they're on that flight. They're watching emails to see if their names have been added to the